Have you ever wanted to add this fun pop of color, but never knew how? Watch in this week's video how I share with you my tips and tricks on how to add this fun pop of color, as well as having it seamless that it looks just perfect. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and save this video for later so you can try it on your next pair of socks. Okay. So let's dive in. What you will need is a pair of needles. We are going to be knitting this on Magic Loop, but this technique is you, you can use it on any type of needles. I am knitting double-stranded, which means that I'm holding that yarn double. So it's a fingering weight held double, creates a fun DK to worsted weight gauge. If you're curious on how to knit socks double-stranded, Link the link below. I have a fun YouTube video on how to do that. You will need a full 100 grams of your main color and a 10 to 20 gram mini skein of a contrast color. To cast on, we are going to be casting on with our contrast color, doing a few rounds, and then switching to our main color. So let's get casting on. One of my favorite and go-to cast-ons is the long tail cast-on. This is something that I learned from my grandmother and how she used to do it and I've done it ever since then. So we first we start off with a simple slip knot. Then we add that slip knot to our needle. Tighten it just a little bit. I like having my working yarn on my left hand side and just the tail end on my right. So to do the long tail cast on, I put it over my thumb and around and pull it through. Around the thumb, here and pull it through. So we are going to be casting on 44 stitches for this pair of socks. Because you're knitting double-stranded, it does create, like I mentioned, a DK to worsted weight gauge. I have a full pattern if you are interested on my perfect double-stranded socks. Double-stranded socks are just amazing to use up those single skein of yarn and really uses up almost everything and creates that fun DK pair of socks with a fingering weight skein of yarn. I just really, really love it. It's something that I started doing in the past few years and have been quickly obsessed with it. There are multiple different ways of casting on. You can use any method that you prefer. Um, this is the way that, like I said, I was taught, but I do know that there's other different ways of using the long tail cast on. Let me know what is your preferred cast on for some socks. Let me know in the comments um, below, I'm curious. And if you do the long tail cast on, do you do it the same as me or do you do it differently? I'm gonna start counting. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirty. We have thirty-one. So I'll meet you back here when I hit forty-four stitches. Once you've cast on your number of stitches required, you're going to slide that on onto the cable part of your needles for magic loop and you're going to divide that into two. Now because 44 stitches, if I divide that into two, it is 22 stitches on each needle. And when you go a knit two, purl two, you will be ending on a knit two stitch. I don't like starting any type of purl stitches on my needles. So I will actually be doing 20 stitches on one needle and 24 on the other. It just makes it a cleaner edge and I'll show you what that looks like. So you're gonna take 20 stitches. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here is where it divides into the 20. We are actually just going to take that little cord and we are going to pull that through. And you can see that this divides your needles or your stitches onto your two needles. We have that little tiny tail. And here is where we are going to join in the round. You want to make sure whenever you're joining the round on Magic Loop that all of your stitches are facing in the inside. You don't want anything twisted. And when I mean twisted, you can see here I've just twisted it and you see those st stitches actually twisted. We want everything facing the exact same way. This is very, very important before you join in the round. So you can see here, 
I have all my stitches facing the same way. We want that working yarn in the back here. And this is where the magic loop can get tricky sometimes, but let me bring you step by step. So you're going to pull out that needle with the working yarn. You're going to pull it out and you're going to leave it on the cable. You're going to insert that needle into the first stitch. Okay, I've not moved anything. I'm going to take the working yarn and I'm coming in here to knit. And this is going to be closing in that gap. So my pattern for this one is knit two, purl two. You can do any type of ribbing that you like. So then we go purl two and we go knit two. So I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around. Oh, wanna make sure I get both of those strands. Now, because the stitches are not um, distributed evenly on my needles, at, right after I finish my ribbing, I will move those two stitches onto the needle to make sure that when I get to my heel that everything is aligned and perfect. But it's just to make sure that I can end on purl stitches um, and creates that cleaner edge stitch. So right here, you're going to turn your work pull the other needle. Now I do know that these needles are a little long. It's because that I will be actually joining these for knitting two at a time. So you are going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pull out this back needle. We are going to take that yarn. And we're going to insert it to knit. Now I get questions all the time on how do I avoid ladders when knitting Magic Loop? I knit the first stitch, I tug, okay? I knit the second stitch and I tug again. This creates not only a tug on the first stitch but the second stitch as well and I do find that that helps significantly. I usually don't get ladders anymore since I've been doing that. So you don't wanna only tug on your first stitch. I even sometimes tug on the third stitch. When I mean tug, it really just is kind of pulling that yarn gently, making sure that you close that gap. If you have your yarn tension very loose, it will create those ladders. And we don't want ladders in our socks because that's not pretty. So you just wanna make sure that you tug on the first three stitches of that round. We have just done one full round in our contrast color. What I like to do, I love tugging on that tail, especially for the first round because here it can be a little gappy. So I usually tug on that tail. I put the tail in the inside, make sure that it doesn't get twisted in the work. And when I go in, again, see how I tug very gently, but I am tugging and it will close in any of that gap tug. hug and then just keep going. So you can see how I've closed in all the gaps. There is nothing left here. So it really creates those clean edges and that can help with your tension as well as those ladders. We are going to be working another rounds of ribbing and I will meet you here right after and we are going to switch off to our main color. We've just finished our two rounds of ribbing and we are ready to add in the main color. So for this you want to cut your contrast color leaving about a six inch tail and we are going to go in to knit on this first stitch so you want to bring your yarn that little tail you want to just bring it in the back you are going to grab one or two strands depending on how you are knitting for me this one is double stranded so we are going to wrap that yarn in the back and you want to make sure that you leave that tail in the back a good six inches same thing to be able to weave it in later so you can see that yarn is in the back and my working yarn is in the front, just like this. 
you're going to hold all the strands together and you are going to knit. I'm going to go into the second stitch, dropping the tail end in the back and you are going to go into knit as the second stitch. Now to make this very seamless, like you can see here that you don't see those blue pearl bumps, we are actually going to knit the first round completely with our main color. And this is going to avoid any of those blue pearl bumps and really create that seamless line for that pop of color. So for this third round, we are going to knit all of the stitches. And you're gonna see that when we go into do the ribbing for the next round that it will be completely seamless. So you are going to knit all of the stitches around. We've done one full round, we turn, bring our needle, and work the second. Same thing, knitting every single stitch. Now anytime you add a new yarn, this stitch at the end is always going to be a little loose, so you definitely want to tug a little bit. We are going to turn our work. I know there's a lot of strands, don't be, um, don't be confused with it. So these working, uh, these little tails, we want to make sure that they are all on the inside of the sock. So I bring in that one, and I will also bring in that blue. Want to make sure that they're in the inside of your sock. Okay, because when we want to join this, we don't want any of those strands popping out here. Now, to make sure that this is closed really nicely, we are going to knit, tug, knit, and tug. Again, also on the inside, you can tug on that blue and that tail end of your main color, and that will actually close in any type of gap here. And this is where we will resume our ribbing. And you can see here that when we do that knit row, it creates a seamless line. If you don't do that, you will have all of these blue little pearl bumps and it just doesn't look as clean and crisp as doing a fun knit round all around. So you can resume your ribbing and continue with that main color. And you really can't see the difference of having that knit row. You, it's, it's really not visible in your pair of socks. And that is how you can add a fun pop of color at the top of your socks. Let me know down below this video if you found it helpful and if you're going to be using it in your next project. Also, make sure you hit that like button if you did find it helpful and subscribe to my channel because I upload a brand new video every single Thursday.